Hi, I'm Prof L, and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about entropy. Um, an interesting topic, entropy, and one that can be a little bit sort of difficult to get your head around, but an extraordinarily important thermodynamic concept. So, what is it? What is, what is entropy, and again, why do we bother with entropy? Well, as we learned a few videos back, one of the reasons why we do thermodynamics is because it allows us to uh, figure out the spontaneity of chemical processes. Okay, so back in the day, sort of 19th century scientists, um, when all this whole thermodynamic stuff kicked off, um, they were thinking that exothermic reactions were spontaneous. In other words, reactions that gave out heat. And, you know, that's kind of a reasonable thing to think, that um, if you've got a reaction that gives out heat, that means it's probably going from a high energy state to a low energy state, and you'd imagine that that should be a spontaneous process. And that the reverse, if you've got an endothermic reaction, in other words, the value of delta H is uh, positive, then you go from low energy to high energy, you'd expect that that's not spontaneous. Perfectly reasonable, makes sense, doesn't it? But let's have a look at the melting of ice at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. You know that that is a spontaneous process, isn't it? Okay, you leave a big old cube of ice out at room temperature, it's going to melt spontaneously until it's all turned into water. Now, the enthalpy change, the standard enthalpy change for that reaction is positive. It's an endoth... or I say reaction, I should say a phase change really, it's not a reaction, it's a phase change. But nevertheless, the enthalpy change for that phase change is positive, plus 6 kilojoules per mole. So in other words, that's going from a low energy state to a high energy state, but it's spontaneous. How does that work? And so then um, the scientists who are studying this thought, oh, okay, so enthalpy is not the answer. Okay, must be something more to it than that. And so then they came across entropy. Now, entropy, ha, you will see all sorts of different definitions of entropy depending on where on the web you go, what textbook you read. Um, so what actually is it? And that's the whole thing. Entropy is a quite a difficult thing to define. So the definition that I like of entropy is that it is a measure of the number of different possible ways that you can distribute energy across a system. Okay, so it's all got to do with the distribution of energy. Okay, uh, a lot of times you'll see entropy thought of or, or stated to be in terms of disorder um, or randomization or things like that. Mm, I don't really like that particular definition. You'll see the pros and cons of it elsewhere. We won't go into that today. But what we're saying is that the more ways that there are to distribute energy ac across a system, the higher the entropy of that system will be. Okay, so um, where to from here, okay? So entropy is also related to probability as well. And essentially what this says is that a system will um, go to the most probable uh, situation, basically, okay? Or the most probable state. Um, and that's where a, a, a chemical system will end up, in a state of high probability, okay? Um, and that is then going to occur spontaneously in terms of high probability. So spontaneity has something to do with entropy. Definitely something to do with entropy, okay? And spontaneous processes tend to disperse energy. In other words, spontaneous processes tend to uh, involve increases in entropy. Hmm. I know, it's not a brilliant definition, I know, but it's a working one for us anyway, okay. So, entropy is involved in the second law of thermodynamics, okay? The second law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics was all to do with internal energy and heat and work. This one's to do with entropy. And so basically, what this says is that whenever a spontaneous process occurs 
in the universe, then the total entropy of the universe increases. Hmm, okay, so that's kind of saying that spontaneity is linked to entropy, doesn't it? Kind of. So that goes on top of another um, statement that we can say in terms of enthalpy. The enthalpy of the universe is constant. There's only so much heat in the universe, but the entropy of the universe is increasing. In other words, that heat in the universe is being distributed over a larger and larger and larger number of states. And that makes sense because the universe is expanding. Okay, Only so much heat to go around, so therefore we're dispersing it even more and more and more. Okay, getting slightly philosophical there, but um, let's talk about entropy in a chemical term, or in chemical terms anyway. Entropy is a state function, just like enthalpy is. And so therefore we can do Hess's law calculations with entropy. That's a good thing, okay? Um, in general terms, when we're talking about entropies, we can say that the entropies of solids will be relatively low, the entropies of liquids will be higher, the entropies of gases will be higher still, okay? Uh, the reason for that being that, let's say in solids, the uh, constituent atoms or molecules are pretty much constrained in the one place. They can't really move. So therefore, uh, there's not many ways that they can distribute their energy over all of the atoms in the system. Liquids, now, they're free to move. And so therefore, you can imagine in terms of energy, you can distribute it over uh, a lot more different combinations of the atoms or molecules than you can in a solid. And in a gas, well, you know, the atoms and molecules are going everywhere. And so there's a whole heap more possible uh, ways to arrange the atoms or molecules in a gas than there are in a liquid or a solid. And so the entropies of gases should be very, very high. They should be certainly the greatest. Now that allows us to qualitatively predict what entropy changes are going to be in terms of the signs of entropy changes. Let's have a look at a chemical reaction here where we're taking sodium hydrogen carbonate and that is reacting to give us sodium carbonate plus water vapor plus gaseous carbon dioxide, okay? And we look at that, we ask the question, right, what do you expect the sign of the entropy change for this process to be? Well, look at the phases of the constituents. In terms of the reactants, solids, okay? So therefore, should have low entropy, one of the products is a solid, should have low entropy. Two of the products are gases, should have high entropies. So therefore you would expect relatively low entropy on this side, relatively high entropy on this side. Big minus small gives you big. So entropy change for this, delta S, should be positive. Okay, you should get a positive entropy change. The entropy should increase as that reaction proceeds because you're forming gases from solids. Okay, another example, C3H8 gas, and we've got that combusting with five oxygens, and we're getting three CO2s out of that gas, and four waters, and again, those are gaseous. What do you think the entropy change for that is going to be, given that everything is a gas? Well, Entropy is related to the number of particles in your system as well. The greater the number of particles, the higher the entropy. So what have we got? We've got one mole and five is six moles of gas on the left-hand side. We've got three and four is seven moles of gas on the right-hand side. We've got a greater number of moles of products than we have of reactants. The entropy of the products, therefore, will be greater than the entropy of the reactants. And again, for this process, in a purely qualitative sense, not involving any numbers yet, then delta S for that process should also be positive. Okay, so that's a bit of a hand wavy thing, but a very, very useful, it's useful as a check when you're doing um, some numerical calculations, one of which we'll get onto in a minute, but not before we talk about the third law of thermodynamics, which also involves entropy as well. So you can tell that entropy is quite important if it's involved in two of the three laws of thermodynamics. I say the three laws of thermodynamics is actually four. There's the first law, there's the second law, there's the third law, and there's the zeroth law. 
because they came up with the first and the second and the third law first and then figured out that they didn't make any sense without a previous law coming before them, so they numbered them 0, 1, 2, and 3. Trivia for the day. Right, third law of thermodynamics, at absolute zero, the entropy of a perfectly ordered crystalline substance is zero. And you might think, okay, big deal. Well, it is kind of a big deal because unlike enthalpy, now entropy values are absolute. Okay, so you can actually measure absolute values of entropy. Um, and that is obviously very, very useful when it comes to doing numerical calculations. I said that entropy was a state function, so let's go ahead and do a Hess's law type calculation uh, using entropies. Now using standard entropies of reaction, here we have got the reaction of carbon monoxide and uh, hydrogen giving methanol. And so S standard of carbon monoxide is 197.9, the units of entropy joule per mole per Kelvin. S standard of uh, hydrogen gas is equal to 130.6 joule per mole per Kelvin. Unlike enthalpy, the entropy of elements in their standard states are not zero because they're absolute values, okay? And S standard of methanol liquid, and that is equal to 126.8 joule per mole per, per Kelvin. There are our data. Those are standard entropies. Uh, if you want, you could call them standard entropies of formation. So quite simply, what we're going to do, just like we did with enthalpies of formation, we're going to add up the right-hand side. We're going to subtract off the left-hand side. Okay, so therefore, S standard for the reaction is going to be equal to CH3OH is going to be 126.8 minus, what do we got? The sum of carbon monoxide 197.9 plus 2 H2s, 2 times 130.6, and then that is going to equal uh, minus 332.3 joule per mole per Kelvin. Okay, so Hess's law type calculation using standard entropies, same sort of thing as we've seen for standard enthalpies, so um, nothing really new there. The answer that we've got, a negative value. Would we expect a negative value, a negative entropy? Well, yes we would, because here we've got three moles of gas giving one mole of liquid. The entropies of the reactants are going to be much higher than the entropy of the product, so the entropy change is going to be negative as reactants turn into products. Um, and so the negative answer that we get, that does kind of make sense, doesn't it? Okay. So I'm going to leave you with a question now. We've got a negative entropy change. We've said that entropy is kind of related to spontaneity. So if we've got a negative entropy change, does it mean that this reaction isn't spontaneous? Hmm. Bugger it, I'll answer the question for you. The answer is no, it doesn't mean that. But what it does mean is that we need yet another um, thermodynamic function in order to figure out spontaneity. Enthalpy is not the whole story. Entropy is not the whole story. In the next video, we will start talking about Gibbs energy. Okay, that's enough for the day. We'll see you in the next video.